live and live with gamers podcast in association with full effect game. See, we don't play those. We just play those. The live and level gamers where gamers come to What's up, what's up, what's up, people? This is your boy, Leverhead, back with the first podcast, episode 90. Our, normally, our normal Thursday crew, 20, D2K, all games, and whatever else comes to the thoughts. Go oh, here, uh, Keith, introduce yourself. Hey, hey, level you uh you going in and out a little bit. Go ahead, K Bon. No, I was saying you're going, you're going in and out a little bit. I just want to let you know that. Um, but this is uh this is K Bomb 20. I had a prior obligation, but it fell through. I'm here to, to talk about these games, these console wars, uh, these updated specs. So I'm ready to get it in today. Keith Norris. You muted if you didn't know. <laughs> I, I didn't. I really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? Like Kayvon said, I'm ready to talk about these console specs. These specs. No, but um, yeah, seriously, I'm ready to get in and talk about these video games, man. Okay. D2K, go ahead, bro. What's going on, people? I'm ready to get the talk going about the the goings on in the gaming industry while I'm sitting here getting my air bust on Halo. <laughs> what version? The original? No, the Master Collection. Okay, that's what's up. All right, so yeah, man, this is 95. Um, if my mic is acting up, let me know so I can um, adjust it. Uh, I tried to, but I don't know if it's still acting up. But anyway, so welcome to the show, folks. We hope y'all are lit in the live chat. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what you would like for us to answer any questions, any thoughts that you have. We are paying attention. We are watching what you got to say right now. The truth says, hey, and others say breath of the wild, ever-changing levels, LOL. I don't know what that means. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, so let's get it in, folks. Started with what you've been gaming on. We're gonna go ahead and throw the uh, D2K because he already said what he planned on. So what you what you gaming on, bro? I just said. <laughs> I was gaming on. <laughs> well, I'm there, you know, I didn't open it up, so I was just giving you a chance to talk about it and whatever else we've been playing on. I mean, um, I don't know, I've been paying playing on much. Uh, I've been busy this week, so I haven't, haven't been playing games that much. Okay. Uh, Keith Norris. Uh, yeah, I've been dabbing a little here and I've been dabbing a little there. I'm playing a little Breath of the Wild. Playing a little. Uh, I bought Snake Pass. Uh, what else I've been playing on? I would uh, like to get your opinion on that. Oh, okay. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, I feel like there's something else I was playing. Oh, um, uh, Shovel Knight, the Spectre of Torment, or something like that. Uh, the one that's yeah. nine ninety one that's nine ninety nine on the uh, eShop. You gotta mm -hmm. go to Nintendo.com. I bought that one. That was pretty good too. Uh, okay, you want... I haven't bought that one yet. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. So give me uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, did you get the Andromeda update? Yeah, yeah, I got it today. Um, it looks it looks a whole <laughs> it looks a whole lot better. Uh, people look like people now uh, instead of lifeless 
I don't know. Kayla will probably explain it better than I could, but it looks a whole lot better. Ooh, I can explain it. Can I can I explain it? <laughs> okay. I mean, and, and Snake Pass, uh, you were telling me last week that I should probably check it out. And it's it's different. It's a different game. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> it's, good. Uh, it's relaxing a little bit, but it's also frustrating, which is weird. Because you're not doing a whole right. Thing. That, that that is a good, that's a good way to describe it. It's relaxing and controller uh, tossing at the exact same time. Go ahead. But yeah, um, one if you know anything about me, I hate snakes, and just to watch the little snake slither across the screen it, it irritates me. But it's it's a good game. I think um, if you like platformers and testing out your skills and things like that, I think you should, you'll want to ch- check it out. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, that's what's up. K Bomb 20. Yeah. So uh your boy, your boy. I've been gaming on uh still rocking that 2K. I'm still getting deep in that overwatch, playing that uh uh competitive mode, getting my competitive juices going. And I think I've probably I mean I put a whole bunch of hours in that multiplayer, uh, as I usually do. Um well if also uh I popped the Witcher back in. Uh oh, yeah. If uh, uh, Keaton, know what I'm talking about, I, I'm finally after 50, after 40, 50 hours, I'm finally a skiller guy. Finally, <laughs> man, finally spent, yeah, man, I spent half the game 50 hours just <laughs> on the first two places. It's just it's how huge that game is, bro. Um, yeah, it's and, and it's, I still have a whole bunch of quests at uh, uh, Valen and Novigrad. See, I'm saying stuff that people don't know what I'm saying, but Keaton, know what I'm talking right. about, right? Oh, yeah. Novigrad. Novigrad. <laughs> Novigrad. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I still have a whole bunch of uh, missions that I haven't done there. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and so I've been doing that, and I, I got a, um, a head. I got to let level head know. So I went ahead and I installed on my uh, PS4 that uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Finally, finally, K Bomb has popped in. I Horizon Zero, we got to play the yeah. rock on you, man. I, I, I popped it in, rock, I saw the title back. screen, and I turned it off. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. You know what? <laughs> so, hey, 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 D2K, you got them effects loaded up, man. <laughs> oh, no. Get this dude the bomb, man. This dude tripping. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm a- on, man. man. I, no, man, I, have, I haven't started. I know, because once I start this game, I'm not going to be able to play any other games right now and so I, I i it's installed on my machine it's installed so i got it on there i just got to put the disc in there and start playing uh full honor i i tried to play that <laughs> i like that thank you <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you D2K, man. it's uh, late but never unsatisfied it was right on the money though Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah whatever so uh i tried to play <laughs> for honor just to prove to uh level head wrong that it's still a good game. I tried to play it, uh, but I, I do have to probably see that level head is right and that game is is done for me now. I'm dead to it. So <laughs> I, I hate I hate the green with level head and saying he's right, but he may be right on this one. So whatever. That's what I'm in game. <laughs> okay. Uh let me say this, man. I, I got another call from an unexpected friend of mine that happened to tune in to our podcast it's like a second or third time this unhappy man and they they really enjoyed the last one when we <coughs> excuse me when k bomb was tongue tied <laughs> he was like yeah man whoever that k bomb guy is he's like I, I was enjoying that one he's like man the one that couldn't say something he's like they had me laughing but we getting a lot of compliments man from different people that i know that have tuned into the so, podcast so, so, so you're gonna bring that back up so that's, 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 that's I forgot what we that. Yeah, we. That's that's what. We well, do. we don't. I don't I, okay. You know, I'm just trying to you know let them know that we 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 got a little huh. following outside the a little bit that we. Anyway, let me talk about what you, I've you been got your flame so, coming. You got yours coming this podcast. I'm a light. You I think we all section. we all got tongue twisted after that night. <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> was tongue twisted after we did that. But anyway, uh, as far as me, man, I've been gaming on that Breath of the Wild, uh, Snake Past. Uh, I'm going to get this graceful, uh, what is it, explosion oh, machine? Oh, I think I seen, um, yeah, I seen, who was it, uh, France, OJ Planet. He did like a, a little 
showcase of it, and I thought it was pretty cool. I uh, so I might get that. Uh, what else? You, somebody said you said something earlier, Keith. That I think I'm gonna get too. That you got. Uh, uh, what was that? Um, shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. I might get that one too. That's nine ninety nine. So, but yeah, mostly, man. I've been playing through the Zelda. Um, I just looked on how many hours I've actually put in. Dude, I've put over a hundred hours into this game. Man. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Unless I just haven't keep kept up with how long I've logged in on some games. When I saw a hundred hours, I was like, it doesn't feel like I put that many hours into this game. And I'm three divine beasts down, one to go. <clears throat> I haven't went through to Ganon. Uh, I'm not disciplined like Keith. If I go beat Ganon, I'm done. If I go beat, beat Calamity Ganon, Ganon, I am done with the game. So I'm not going to go do something that's going to make me put this game off to the side because I know the main objective is to beat Calamity Ganon. So I'm going to save that part. Right now I just got all my armor for the uh, ancient armor. So I've been going around just killing uh, um, the guardians, like just taking them out. I got my, I got the uh, master sword. So I'm just going around just chopping their leg, they they limbs off, and then just shooting them in their eyeballs until I get tired of shooting them, and then I take them out. It's it's the most gratifying feeling in the world, man. When you hear that, and they just blow up. Oh my god! I feel like I'm in, I'm like a few notches of uh, be, uh below heaven. So. I've been doing that. I killed like since I got this ancient armor. I killed at least at the least about fifteen. Uh, <laughs> just it, with no with no trepidation, no concern about my life. I ain't worried about dying. I just take them doing that. Just got done uh, half of my barbarian armor. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, Keith. Oh yeah, that's my favorite one. I already got it upgraded. I gotta get. I can't find the final, the shirt, the middle piece. I got the, I got the pants. I got the helmet. I haven't found the middle armor, so uh, I'm still trying to get that. What do you say? I don't, don't want to spoil it for you, but I think they're all located in mazes. So once you find, yeah, I went through that. I think I got to go back to that maze again, man, because the pants I actually got somewhere else. I got the pants. I didn't get the pants in the maze, but I got the helmet at the maze. But anyway, I'm gonna go back and see if I didn't know if they missed something in that uh, maze that I went through. But you're right. So um, I don't know. I know we didn't come talk about Zelda, but let let give me, Kevin, give me like give me like five more seconds. Anyway, uh, or oh, no, hold, five on, more... hold on, hold on, bro. Because go ahead. Uh, uh, this is still Zelda related, and I, and I said um. Uh, I'm gonna have to get him on the podcast, man. But I, I talked to my my guy again, um, and he was telling me how he would he would rather play. Uh, he, he said he had just finished Final Fantasy, and the first that last Final Fantasy is pretty good. And he said he's moving on to the next game he want to play, and the next game he wanted to play was he said Horizon. And I said, what happened? Mm. What happened to Zelda? And he gave me a look. I'm like, what, what's that look for? And uh, and then and then we still talked a little bit about what was was his continued dislike of the game and one of the pieces mm -hmm. that he was talking about and it's something that we haven't really discussed and I'm talking bring up in the podcast is the music. Uh, he said he, he doesn't he doesn't like the music at all and the one thing he was talking about how it's not memorable, you know. And so what he says what he does when he plays it he turns the the music off and he goes to the computer and turns on turn turn on his old school Zelda music and plays to that. <laughs> okay, he's doing too much. I'm just I, hey, I'm I gotta just, get back up there, man, and go. We gotta go, we gotta take a trip over to Illinois. Just man. You know, bro. We gotta have a conversation. I gotta bring this dude back. I think he I think the switch design and everything just I made him just uh I don't know, some might be not might be off mentally. Man, no, the music in Zelda is <laughs> not mentally. The music in Zelda is great. It's great, bro. Like it ain't. Well, I think his problem would be, is is not an abundance when it's not just you running around and music is playing. Parts of a lot of the games you just hearing 
the elements yeah. of the wild. You're just hearing birds and and, and, that, and that's what he's talking about. Is that is, is that is that you know what I'm saying? You were I love that. I love that about it. Yeah, I, that, that's actually more. It, it's immersive. But when you get to certain areas, the music is what triggers you to let you know what area you in. Like when you get right now, I'm in the Gorons location, and that that traditional music show up. Uh, mm -hmm. When you went to the uh, what is it, Zorro? Is that how you say it, Zora? Uh, Zorro, yeah. Zorro area, that music come on. All the traditional music is there. I would have to find out how far he has made it in the game, because the Great, great Plateau and how they throw you into the game with with little direction might. And you said he likes direction. He likes to know what they want him to do. That might be I, he hasn't. No, I, I didn't. I didn't say that. I ain't said. That's oh, okay. What did you say? No, no. I I just said that he didn't like. Um, he, he does it. He has no problem doing it. But he just said it made him feel like it was Nintendo days when he had to write down all the all the potions right. uh, that he had to do. Not saying that he likes his hand being held, uh, but he did have a valid point to it. He's the kind of person that just picks up a game and just start playing it. So I I, I don't want that to be uh, what's thought because that's not actually how he uh, plays. That's what I play. But that's not how he plays. Okay, well, it's, it it can be overwhelming at first, but once you get into the game and you get, like, into it and you can start getting the places out of it, I would think he has, hasn't made it very far because to say the music is not great, I think that's just not true. Like, pundits in, like, the traditional, everywhere you go and there's music playing, it's not like that, but when you get to locations, all those old school, like, you go meet this certain uh, Ruto bird. I think that's how you say the name. Ruto, is it Ruto? Uh, uh, my bad. I'm cutting out again. Let me let me check something. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yeah. What are the birds' yeah. names? The uh, Rito. Yeah. Huh? The Rito. Rito. Like there's one Rito bird that you find in different locations. When you talk to him, he will play certain songs that make you remember what this land has to do with the Zelda universe, like the historical aspects of Zelda, the past, the present, future, whatever. So it plays a song and it takes you back in the past to what something that took place in another game or some, some aspect about another Zelda that you know about that lets you know what this place actually is. Like right. stuff. No, dude, it's dope, man. It's a dope game. <laughs> it's dope, man. I can't. No, nah, I can't rock with that. Even though I know dude is dude is a real gamer, I can't rock with that. But anyway, I, I told him I'm about to get him on so he can so he can share. Yeah, you got to bring him on so I can uh, chastise him for about <laughs> an hour. <laughs> and dude has valid points, man. I mean, it's valid. So, but yeah, he does. Let him explain point. it because I can't explain his point of view. Okay. So uh, outside of that, I've been playing Snake Pass uh, and like. Keep saying it's a game that really is really common. The visuals, the set piece, the the stages, but at the same time, it can get very frustrating with trying to uh, manipulate this snake and make them do what you need to be done. It's just sometimes it's it's aggravating because it's so everything else I've ever played, but as well as what I've been playing. So that's about it. Um, haven't turned on my Xbox One. Well, I turned my Xbox One on for the first time to watch 33. And I got to ask, I got to ask D2K something, man. You ready, D2? I got to get your opinion on something. Are you there? You muted if you're talking. D2K. Oh, sorry about that. I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about the Goldberg Brock Lesnar match? I liked it. Um, it was real good. It was okay. it was what it needed to be. It was kind of like um, some of the people might not be old enough to remember this, but it was kind of like the the marvelous Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns fight. Yeah. Okay, I got what you said. It, it kind of reminds me of like that. It was just like a a knock down, drag out, you know, all out war for like three minutes. You know, four minutes. It is. I mean, they both yeah. did like their. They both did their setups and their finishes like four or five times a piece and kept kicking out of them. I'm like, it was exciting. I, I was exactly what it needed to be. 
uh, what did you think about when Brock, when like Goldberg wrestling and Brock just grabbed him and, and did two uh, German, I don't know if it's German suplexes, but two suplexes. Sure. And yeah, then Goldberg too, just got up and speared him out. Of, out of that was that was hype when he when he he gave him like yeah, three German man. suplexes, and it was like not even two seconds. He turned around, wow, he got speared just like that. I'm like Goldberg is legit, man. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that made me jump out my seat, man. I literally uh, the, the people I was watching it jumped out they seat because I jumped. So you know, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of funny because the fans have started resenting Goldberg a little bit because they're like, okay. This guy done been in like three matches and he ain't even wrestled for four minutes yet. And they gave this dude the belt. So it was some booze out there for him a little yeah. bit. But at, but after he speared him and then he speared him again, and he speared him through that barricade. The fans are like, okay, yeah. all right, Goldberg is legit. They started cheering his name again. I'm like, okay, all right. You did know, you, it was good. Did you feel like it should have went a little longer, just a tad bit longer? No, I think it ended the way okay. it needed to end. You know, they just they, they had right. to, I mean they didn't Goldberg he's just not he's in great physical looking shape but he doesn't have the wind anymore and I think that if you let him out there too much too much longer he'd be exposed and it would just it would mess up what they did before so right right they ended, right. There, they ended it yeah, at the right point I guess in that context I, I had to agree I because I was like man if Goldberg would have kicked out one time and Maybe, maybe, maybe win another two or three minutes. I would have been fine, but yeah, I feel what you're saying. He wasn't, he ain't in tip top shape to go like that at his age. So, but I don't think that's it for Goldberg. I think they're gonna bring him back, man, uh, somewhere down the road. So, I don't think well, he's getting he's, that type of shape. Well, well, that's what he said after the show on Raw because after Raw went off mm -hmm. the air, he came out there and gave his goodbye speech. And he said that, well, you never know, you know, I might show up, I might not, you know, just keep a lookout. So, he gone for the time being, but he ain't retired. Yeah. I think uh I think you don't get back in that type of shape. Like he went from looking like nothing to like Goldberg over six months. So I don't think he's just gonna waste that. I think you I think we might see him again early, earlier than later. So but anyway, yeah, I just had to get your thoughts on that. Uh uh what let's so let's get into this, man. Uh I wanna I wanna start here. Before we get to the Microsoft stuff, I've been hearing is I, I got to get Keith's opinion on it because I, I think this is just this is one of those situations where I feel like we as gamers don't know how to appreciate stuff. Uh, I made a video earlier today talking about uh, I hear about all these complaints about there's no games for the Switch at the folks on Beat Breath of the Wild, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see no drought. I don't see no. Uh, Nothing looking barren. I, I matter of fact, I'm, I got a lot of stuff to play, and I'm still playing Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart Eight Deluxe is about to show up now. Do you agree? Do you feel like the Switch is is starting to show that it don't have no games? Or what, what, what's your thoughts on that, uh, Key? Uh, it's actually funny you uh, bring that up because I was actually thinking about this the other day. I was wondering, like, with all the games that's on the Switch, and I didn't have Breath of the Wild, would I still enjoy it? And I think the answer is yes. Uh, I will probably have snipper clips and all these other games, all these little knickknack games. No, they won't be the triple A games that you know we're expecting, but mm -hmm. uh, the 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 fact that you can take this thing on the go and play little games um, outside of the house and even in the house, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I think I think the Switch itself, what it's doing, is is it justifies it not having that that game that you would expect. It's, it's like a, a brand new thing. It's a brand new console, a brand new idea. Well, I guess you can say brand new idea. Uh, and I, th I think it justifies. So, yeah, I, I think it is a little far-fetched to say it's, a, it's the Zelda box. And yeah, I think you can enjoy the Switch without playing Zelda at all. So, and even with Zelda, there's so many so many games like the, the Shovel Knights, the Fast RMX, uh, Snipper Clips. Um, and then there's games that's just constantly coming out week after week. And you just mentioned one uh, that I'm planning on picking up tomorrow. Uh, what was it called? The Explosion? Great, something Explosion. Great graceful, explosion. Ex graceful Explosion. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a constant movement of games. And we don't appreciate these little small games. We, we're so focused on, uh, man, does it have the uh, Mass Effect? Does it have the Call of Duty? Does it have the Overwatch and stuff like that? 
that's cool. But then there's also other developers out there that's putting in a lot of work that's actually putting in uh, a lot of good games on the Switch that I think should get a nod too. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I find it funny, man. It just says to me that people, people, I don't know. We just can. I don't buy games. I don't. I don't know. I, I, I would be curious of how much people spend on games a month that act like this, like. Cause to keep up with that type of desire, you got to be probably buying a game every week and a half. Every two weeks, you buying another game. So you got like a hundred and seventy dollar habit going on. I, me, I don't buy games at that uh, that Mac that uh like that. Go ahead. Uh, who was gonna say something? Yeah, this uh, Kayvon. I, I I saw the video and I, and I wanted to respond, uh, but I didn't feel like writing, so I so I gave it up. Uh, <laughs> 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 and so now that you brought it up on, on the podcast, it's giving my opportunity to talk since I don't like typing. Um, the, the thing is with, with that, and I, and I saw the argument that you, you presented, uh, but uh, another counter argument I wanted to present is that quantity doesn't equal qua- uh, quantity doesn't equal quality. Um, and even if there's multiple games to be played, doesn't mean there's games worth playing. Um, and, and another thing I wanted to build on top of that was uh, even some of the stuff that that were sh- that was shown were I know I saw the Neo Geo stuff and, and stuff and stuff like that. And but if if that's the case, if we're counting those as stuff that we can play, then how even how different is that from the PS4 launch, which which was considered um, not a good launch because when it came out, um, it did have. Um, games that were on previous consoles, which was the Battlefield, which was um, Call of Duty, which was also um, the Assassin Creed. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna make a point here, so, so don't crucify me. No, here. no, no, no. I'm gonna make a point here. The thing is, uh, even the difference between the two games, uh, when you look at um, Assassin Creed on the PS3 to the Assassin Creed for the PS4, you saw a clear difference between between the two games uh but even when you when you look at the difference between the 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 maker hit the mega hit of um zelda between the switch and and the um um what i think called wii u version is is the difference is smaller than the difference you would have seen if we're just talking about graphics wise obviously um that you you will see but like he said that the the what you get from having a switch is the portability. But my thing is, if we're just talking about the games itself, uh, if you have an argument to say that the the switch's lineup is is not lacking, then in that same breath, you can't say that the PS4 lineup is was lacking because it has very similar things uh, going for each other. So I, I, the I, argument I, I want to present. I agree with that. I, but my my when it came to the PlayStation Four lineup. I think people were were using that lineup to offset the criticism of the Switch's lineup. Like a lot of folks were saying, this is the worst lineup ever. And then, I'm, and then most folks were like, okay, if that's the case, then what did we get with both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4? Because these lineups match, like you just said, each other. Now, I wasn't really using the Neo Geo games as the, as a, see, I got games to play. I was using Zelda, RMX, fast RMX, and, and Snake Pass. To me, these are and I haven't got this game yet, but a, a one two clip. Those those games to me are good games. Like like, and they wasn't. Uh, you could play on the older system. This is something new to this particular platform. Both RMX. Snake pass you playing, you'd be like, Oh no, these these are legit games. Now the, the Neo Geo stuff, yeah, you're right. And going to PlayStation 4, Rezo Gun from whatever I what I saw, I would play Rezo Gun. It, it was I, a good I game. thought it was, it was good. Okay. When great, uh, it looked good. fun. And and then uh you had uh other games like Kill Zone and stuff like that. And, what, and, and then Warframe, you had what you Warframe just said, would, would call yeah, the Warframes and the Call of Duties yeah. that you can update and battle battlefields and stuff. But if that wasn't bad. If that was okay, if that was decent enough for lunch, I don't understand how in a month's time, like Keith saying, with all these games here, some kind of way you can't find nothing that you would like to play on the Switch. And I'm not talking about people who say this from other camps. I'm talking about Nintendo heads 
saying this. Oh man, it, it, we I feel like it's a drought. Oh uh, man, I'm I'm man, I'm feeling like we you all over again. I'm like, how, where, when, why? Maybe you need to look in the mirrors and ask yourself, do I have a life? <laughs> because it ain't no way, man. Like, do you not do anything else but play games? Like, some of these people. I guarantee they ain't like Keith, who might have beaten the games, but he done it that way because he knew he was going to go back and do the shrines and all that stuff later and find the rest of the stuff later. They, most of them guys ain't like that. They like me. If they beat the game, they're done. So why did you beat the game when you had all this other stuff you can do? Like, like I said, I'm in an hour in, and I, can, I still like it's probably like 11 to 12 hearts I haven't gotten. I got two full meters of stamina. I got I'm I'm right at 61 shrines. Um uh, dude, it's like 130, 40 shrines in this game. <laughs> See what I'm saying? How are you all the merch and, and the, the weapons and the different how are you already done and done with the game a month in with all this to do with it? I don't understand that. I'm a hundred hours in, and that's all I got. Uh, no, I and and I I agree with you some there, but um the, the thing the point I wanted to say that also that is that I can personally say that I think the the Nintendo lineup is weak because if you actually when we actually got on the podcast when the PS4 came out and started doing my own own podcast and I remember you asking me the question about the PS4 after I bought it and you asked me should people go out and buy the PS4 and if you go if if, if anyone wants to go back to to fact check me to make sure yeah, I'm I said no you, you said no if, if you, yes I exactly I said no because the games are not here yet. That's but exactly you had what I, right, but look, look at this, K Bun. You had okay. Well, keep 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 said it would still be worth it if Zelda wasn't there. I, I would I would differ from Keith on this sense. If uh, Zelda I, wasn't I, I there, said, I said if you didn't buy Zelda. Okay, if if yeah, if you didn't buy okay, if uh, okay, <laughs> if Zelda wasn't available, if Zelda wasn't available, I would agree with you. But with Zelda being available, plus all the other games, I would say the Switch is worth it. But if the if Killzone was a good game, I would have said it was worth it. But but Killzone was garbage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The game that was supposed to carry the system turned out to be it's garbage. Decent. decent. So, Never talked about that. Killzone is decent. Most it's folks average. thought it was garbage, Kate Bum. You said it was decent, but most thought it was average. garbage. I, but I, I would go average. But Folks had to resort to Resogun to make the system worthwhile. I remember watching a lot of folks playing Resogun more than Killzone, even though Killzone was the platform of the game that was supposed to push the platform with the, the graphics and all that. So anyway, I, I I still don't see how folks saying it's a drought when you got Mario Kart 8 like literally a week and a half away, two weeks away. You got man, there's so much stuff I can point out, but I ain't got time. For, for Nintendo, well, let me for get Nintendo let me get. Heads, on I'm, this. I'm sorry. Go ahead, D2. Go ahead, go ahead, D2. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm I've been sitting here listening to this, and there's like a vein popping out in the front of my forehead because I'm so annoyed by this. Um, when their N64 launched, it had two games. Two. Games. Two. It had Mario 64 and Pilot Wings. And that's it. That's a drop. <laughs> but you literally only have two games, period, to play for several weeks. I'm not sure how long it was before the next game came out. But at launch, that's all you had. You had two games. That's it. Nothing. So, no, there is no drought with the Switch. There was no droughts with the PlayStation 4. There was no droughts with the Xbox One because there were games to play somewhere. It may not be of what you wanted to play, but there was something to play. And I think people need to understand is that this is a very, it's a very relative term when you say there are no games out there because it's based off of what you want and what you desire. You may think that the right. games out there are great because it, it caters to you, but someone else might look at those same games and say, nah, 
because those games don't cater to them. And if those games don't cater to them, they might as well not be there. So from their right. perspective, there are no games because I'm not going to play Snipper Clips. I'm not going to play uh, Super Bomberman R. I'm not going to play, um, you know, Shovel Knight or, or, or Blaster Master or something like that because those games don't appeal to me. So I have to look at the games that appeal to me. Okay, I like Zelda. I like Fast RMX. And that's pretty much it. So for somebody <laughs> like me, that's all that would be there to play. But for somebody right. else could look at the same games and say, I like Zelda and Fast RMX and, and Shovel Knight and Bomberman and uh, Snipper Clips and One Two Switch and everything else that's on there. I'm playing everything. And from that person's perspective, there's a ton of games to play on the Switch. So there is a definitive answer to this. It's about the individual's consumers desires and what they want to do with their money so you know when people say well, there's no games on this well you know it has nothing to do with me that's their <laughs> and, there's a, and there's nothing mean their opinion is wrong it just means that they don't have the games to play that they want and that's really the end of it yeah and i agree with you and i agree how you how you frame the drought the yeah. drought part yeah so somebody that, that, was, that, was, that was what that's what i was alluding to was the drought not necessarily taste if you saying what's there ain't don't appeal to you, oh, okay, that's fair. To say there's there's a drought, like like you said, the drought was the N64. <laughs> that's literal evidence there was nothing else to be played on the platform for a while. Because I remember when um, a Killer Instinct Gold came out, finally came out, and yeah. it was like far in between for these games. So that's where I was alluding to. But I agree with you wholeheartedly, D2K. Is preference wise, yeah, I can see somebody saying I'm not interested in these games. That statement, you can't say there's a drought there. You can say I'm just not interested in what's there. So I, yeah, I applaud what you just said. So let's move on. <laughs> Did you can shut it down? Uh, yeah. Get out the pen and pad and learn, people. Um, yeah. So let's talk about this Microsoft situation. Uh, so today. What was thought to be rumored, we found out earlier this week, was actual facts. And that on Thursday, that Microsoft will be revealing the specs of the Scorpio device, the new platform, the new Xbox One, uh, I guess, Scorpio. So <clears throat> they had a, I don't know, I, I, I'm going to make sure I'm right, because I saw a three-minute video of... Phil Spencer and others talking about the platform, right? Is that am I wrong on that? Like it was a three minute I didn't, video. I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I just looked yeah, I saw Okay, I saw that on Digital Foundry's main page, and some other people called Dendril. Uh, <laughs> I won't say what uh, Doctor Trey be saying. Anyway, and other folks. Digital Foundry. They, <laughs> That's what he likes to call yeah. <laughs> But anyway, and I heard another one did a digital effery. That's what they were saying. So uh, they, don't, I, they don't say that when they so, say good things about Nintendo. But but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> now this is this is. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, this is coming from a guy that's a PC head. I, I hear that from. But I saw on YouTube that the dude that I guess owns or runs Digital Foundry. He went into more depth on the reveal. So, did anybody? Nobody saw that three minute video on that I'm talking about. What feels it was like a montage. It was almost like what you saw from um, the You making this up, bro? Huh? It said you it said you making Emma? this up, bro? No, I saw this at work, man. I know what I saw. But anyway, uh, it won't make sense for me to go where I want to go if you didn't see that. So, so let's talk about it because I'm not a spec head. I don't know all the, the terminologies. I don't when they say certain things is over my head. So I know we got D2K here. I know Keith Norris got a, a gaming PC. I know K Bomb is kind of flirting with the idea of getting one. What's the verdict? I'm gonna go with D2K since he was the most quiet after he schooled us and shut us down on the last conversation. I'm gonna start with you. What's your verdict, man, with all the information of the Scorpio? Much ado about nothing. Oh, that's pretty much it. I mean, <laughs> nothing to do about nothing. 
I didn't, they didn't really say anything I didn't already know or I couldn't extrapolate from the information that we already had. Um, you still don't really know what processor is in Scorpio. We just know that it's an eight core x86 processor. We don't know if it's a Jaguar again. We don't know if it's an excavator. We don't know if it's a Ryzen. We just know it's eight cores and the cores are clocked at 3.2 gigahertz per core. Now in comparison to the original Xbox One, that's original Xbox One was clocked at 1.7 gigahertz per core. So it's an upgrade there. And the PlayStation yeah. 4 Pro is at 2.1 gigahertz. So it's a little bit faster than the PlayStation 4 Pro, significantly faster than the original Xbox One. Um, it has 40 compute units at 1,172 megahertz, which is substantially faster than the 12 point, or, or actually 12 compute units at 850 megahertz on the Xbox One and 914 megahertz of the Xbox One S. Um, the memory, 12 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, that's a lot of RAM. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a lot of RAM. And obviously the PlayStation 4 Pro, 4 Pro has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 and the, place, and the Xbox One has 8 gigabytes of DDR3, which is much slower, and 32 megabytes of ES RAM, which is super fast, but it's not a whole lot. And keeping in the memory area, this is where things really take off for Scorpio. If you look at the DDR3 RAM on the Xbox One, it's at 68 gigas, gigabits per second. That's the memory bandwidth for that. But you look at the memory bandwidth of Scorpio is 200 or 326 gigabits per second memory bandwidth. Yeah, this thing about fast. It's probably gonna be hot too. So that's Go ahead. super fast, and you got 12 gigs of that. So that's pretty fast. And then you compare it to the PlayStation 4 Pro, PS4 Pro is 218 gigabits per second. So it's about one and a half times faster. The GPU, the memory bandwidth, you know, Scorpio. After that, everything is pretty much the same. You know, it's got a one point, it's got a one terabyte hard drive, and it's got a 4K Blu-ray player in there. But you know, it's definitely more powerful than, than PlayStation 4 Pro. It's not a generational leap from the Xbox One. I would say it's somewhere in between a generational leap and just being somewhat more powerful. But so it's more like it's more a real stopgap, a real middle ground council. Yeah, it's a like, middle ground. I mean, you know, especially the fact that it's not that far away from PlayStation 4 Pro. But the point of all this is that you could have this thing could be a generational leap, and it won't make a difference if you don't have the games to play on it. And that's the reason why I say this is much ado about nothing, because we've seen Microsoft cancel. Fable Legends, we see them cancel Scalebound, we see them close studios. And why do I have confidence as an Xbox owner or somebody who's thinking about buying Scorpio when you get gotten rid of new things that people were actually interested in and the things that we that you banked on to be heavy hitters, Halo, Gears, and Forza turn out to be mediocre. In the case of Halo, terrible. You know, so now Halo 5, Halo 5 <laughs> yeah. was awful. Gears War 4 was, go ahead. My son would not play it. I bought it for both of us. I, I'm not, you know me, I'm not a first, I'm not an FPS fan, but I thought he would be into it since this is his platform. I bought Halo 5. I think he played it twice. And like, man, I don't want to play that. <laughs> and I had to go trade it in. But anyway, go ahead, man. You're right. Yeah, that was uh, gone. Was yeah, gone. You shouldn't have bought it in the first place. But um, it's 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 really that bad. And Gears of Four, well, Four was it's okay. You know, it's all right. But it just doesn't have. It's not memorable. It didn't have any weight to it. And Forza is Forza. You right. know, what I mean, if you like, you I mean you play one racing simulator, you played them all. You know, it's just their version of it. So, you know, this, I mean, and you got Crackdown coming, you know, eh, I guess, you know, Sea of Thieves, yeah, you know, you know, I mean, Record turned out to be terrible. Uh, what's, what's that? The, 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 the game with, um, the, what was that game? Quantum Break. That game turned out to be, yeah. So, yeah, man, they, I still they, got it, eh? yeah, this, they have too many, eh, you know, what games are supposed to be, yes. You know, you don't have one thing on the Xbox One that you can say they knocked out of the park. 
You know, I mean, I mean, at least the Wii U had games you could say, okay, Nintendo knocked out of the park with this one. Even though the console failed, they still had games to say, okay, they that's a home run right there. There's nothing on the Xbox One that does that. Not a single I'm, game. I'm a- I'm gonna have to get a uh, a little a thing to say preach preacher on that man because you preach it right now. Go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 shoot. You know, you tell the truth, man. I listening to you. I'm thinking about it. I own the Xbox One and I own the games that you're talking about. I own Gears of War for I own uh, I owned uh, Halo Five. I uh, own uh, the only game that I will say that I really enjoyed was uh, what was the game that. Came, they hit lunch with the white system. I can't think of it right now. I can go there and get it. Tomb Raider. Uh, watch some watch. Uh, sunset. Sunset. Sunset uh, Overwatch. Overdrive. No, not overdrive. Overwatch. Sunset Overdrive. What is it? Yeah, Sunset Overdrive. I enjoyed that game, but for the most part, outside of the third party offerings, everything that was first party, uh, uh, Quantum Break, su- such a subpar mediocre game and these are all like you said d2k they were supposed to wow you and they was like uh oh, it was, it was, it, gears of war was like uh, it was it was wow at first and it turned out oh, this is this cool it's redundant but it's cool n- n- nothing nothing has hit home from first party from this company you right on the money i can't do nothing but <laughs> preach go ahead man i'm listening <laughs> you're well, telling the truth i mean that's that's pretty much it i mean you know they that's the reason why I mean I can't envision a scenario when where Microsoft steps up there at E3 and they say we've got 20 to 30 exclusives coming to the Xbox One and Scorpio and because where coming from <laughs> you know where would they get it from <laughs> and and you know me and my friend were throwing something around the other day and it's it's a really outlandish and crazy and ridiculous and completely out of the box suggestion you know it's just like it's so ridiculous that you know like if that actually happened it would be genius because this idea fits the facts that are out there and i'm sitting here thinking about it you know they're canceling all these first parties their games they're getting ready all these first party studios they basically have no first party at all yet they have this big huge powerful piece of software or half hardware coming out. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be interesting if Phil Spencer comes out there and people are wanting to find out what exclusives you're going to have? And he says, Well, we don't have a whole lot of exclusives, but we do have a lot of second party games that we want to bring in. And we would like to bring the person that's going to talk to you about those games right now and out walks reggie and he talks about games from nintendo being able to be played on scorpio stop it d2 check <laughs> <laughs> and likewise you had a you hear a pin drop if you and likewise <laughs> they will announce a partnership where microsoft games will be able to be played on the switch Dude, look, man, stop. This, 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 this ain't no Cleo moment. But this... <laughs> you know what that would anyway. sound like? That would sound like defeat. Like, we can't beat PlayStation. Let's team up. That's what Ex- like. Exactly. Exactly. Because they have lost. It's <laughs> over for Microsoft. They don't have a choice. They either got one. Ch- they have these, these are options that are available for Microsoft. They either need to team with Nintendo. Uh uh-huh. did, did he drop? I don't know. I, I I don't think so. I still see his face. Well, anyway, okay. We, we, he's about he coming with a good point. I was ready. Yeah, he's making some good points. So when he get back in, we we pull him back in. But go ahead, uh, Keith. Go ahead. <sighs> what yeah, more yeah, can you, I say? You, you follow that. You follow that. <laughs> <laughs> what more can I say? I, I guess I gotta take it in a different direction. I mean, everything he said was. What I was already thinking, like, yeah, you're coming out with this new hardware and telling us about all the gigaflops and the teraflops and the googly goops. And I understand all of it, but at the same time, what am I going to be doing with it if you're trying to give me console parity between the original Xbox 
and then you want me to also play the same games on the whatever the Scorpio is going to be called. So what's the point? And I want to use this as an as a demonstration. I have a PC, and I play The Witcher, and I play the ultra settings, uh, 1080p, you know, 60 frames per second. That's how I play the game. K Bomb is playing it on PlayStation 4, um, which is what. Uh, is it 1080p? I think it's 1080p on PlayStation 4 and 30 frames per second. Yeah, it's 1080p. And, and probably high, like a probably medium to high settings in between. But at the end of the day, we're playing the same game. It, it don't matter that mine is pushing this and all this other stuff and his is pushing that. We're getting the same experience from the same story, uh, going to the same places. It's the same game. So I, I can't I can't get excited about the Scorpio because you're going to be playing the same games that a person who has a regular Xbox that came out in 2013. Like, what's the point? Like, who? Well, I know who is it for, but it. And I feel like we need a little bit more information as to know what the uh, Scorpio is going to be. You know, in terms of what you know, like if it's going to be like a a replacement for a PC or something like that. But if it's just talking about games, if it's just a souped-up Xbox One, I really don't see the point. But I don't want to harp on it and and um, take away the excitement for Xbox fans. Xbox fans, be excited! Uh, you got a new console coming out. Your games are going to be in 4K, 60 frames a second, which is a huge feat. Uh, what people are rumoring it to be about 400 to 500 dollars. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's a, that's a that's a good thing. Even though I think Microsoft is going to eat that cost a little bit. Like D2K said, they might as well come over here to Nintendo. No, I'm just kidding. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, I, uh, to finish off what I was saying is that they got three they, they got three options available. They team with Nintendo, they team with Sony, or they go third party. Those are the best options available for Microsoft. Just make more the games. Well, if Nintendo, you know, I was, me and my friend were also talking about the fact that how, you know, Killer Instinct is not the same because it's not with Nintendo anymore. It just doesn't have the soul. The soul is going from Killer Instinct. It's got some great graphics. It's got some cool stuff here and there. The music is great, but it just doesn't feel like Killer Instinct because Nintendo's not behind it. Now, if you take Halo, you take Gears, you take Forza, you take all their first-party IPs, and you put Nintendo magic behind it, it's a whole other story. And that's the whole point is that um, Microsoft doesn't have an identity. They don't know who they are. They've been trying to figure out who they were for the past 15 years, and they still haven't figured it out. They don't know if they want to be a, a, a hardcore hardware company. They don't, they don't know if they want to be like Nintendo. They don't know if they want to be like Sony. They can't figure it out. And just making a console that's super powerful is not the answer. The Xbox was the most powerful console of the sixth generation. It failed. The Xbox arguably was the most powerful console of the seventh generation. It failed. This generation, the Xbox One is powerful, but it's not as powerful as X, uh, PlayStation 4, and it's failing. So having Scorpio being the most powerful console on the market is not going to do you any good if you don't have the games to play on it to differentiate. And be, like uh, Keith was just saying, as far as third parties, it doesn't matter that you have a more powerful version of it because you can still play the same game on a regular Xbox One S or a regular Xbox One. You still play the same game on the PlayStation 4. You still play the same game on the PC. So why should I get your console over the others? And that's where the first party content comes into play, which there is none. <laughs> and that's the reason why yeah, you're a team with right. Ninten- either, either Nintendo, mostly Nintendo, because they're already in Wa- a Redmond Washington anyway, just walk across the street and sign a deal, say, let's put some of your IP on. Like, wouldn't you like to be able to play, see what Zelda would look like in 4K, 60 frames per second? Just be that honest. Would be <laughs> yeah, Mario Mario Odyssey, Mario Odyssey 4K 60 frames per second Metroid the new Metroid 4K 60 frames per second it, it would be interesting because you know Microsoft does have a uh, they have a great service they have great uh, servers for their online multiplayer yep um, and then it would like you said it would be cool to get gears over to Nintendo and put Nintendo's heart and magic behind it it would be an interesting uh, combination so uh, let me get let me get K Bummer here because I want to take this around. I want to dissect like how they uh, done it, not necessarily what they said, but the method and how we got the information. I I have an issue with this. But go ahead, uh, K Bummer. Uh, it, it's funny because 
Uh, seeing these specs remind me of a TV show I used to watch back in the day when I was a kid. Everybody, does anybody remember? I know you guys do, but um, um, what that tool time? What that, home, yeah, improvement. Yeah. home improvement. Yeah, when, when he when he I, 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 more power. <laughs> You're right, man. It, it does sound like that. <laughs> you know, and so I don't think he, so, Tim. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you, D2K. Thank you, sir. I love oh, that this show. I don't think so, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love that show. But anyway, even when you look at him, and he take uh, – it's probably a poor example, but I, I, I love it, so I'm going to use it. Um, even when you look at him and he just puts more power into whatever he was using, it never turned out well. Oh. You know, just, just throwing more power at something. And, you know, I, what I see from, from Xbox is that they're just throwing more power at the system. The reason why I'm saying that is because, and not saying that, it, it, yes, it, it is better than the PlayStation Pro. It, it definitely is. It's clearly is. The specs clearly say that. Um, but I don't have a PlayStation Pro either. And but the thing is, this is um, even though even with this power, what are you going to do with it? I think we've all said it. If your games is this, if we're getting the same game on the Xbox, um, and but you have the prettier version. Um, does it justify the price tag? The oh. thing is, even when you when you went from the PS3 to the PS4, you still got something else that you couldn't get on the PS3. There was still uh, um, some uh, more um, physics based games were explored because of the additional power that the PS4 game gave. Uh, there were different avenues and different things, and the online network, the PS4 that wasn't the PS3, again was explored because. Uh, of the use of the PS4. That's why you see a lot of these Destiny type games, these open world, persistent worlds now that you did not see on the PS3. Uh, and, and even seeing more um, MMOs you're now seeing on PS4 that you didn't see on the PS3 or the Xbox because they weren't structured to be able to perform that type of gaming. But the thing is, if, if you're not going to, if you're not getting any new experiences, and I know um, um what a Manchu! I forgot his guy name used to pop on, and he talks about his five new experiences. He, he talks about, um, but if you're not getting any new experiences, if the only thing we're getting is updated graphics, what 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 is the point to the system? Um, and and for me, that's re- one of the reasons why I still don't own a pro, even though I am a graphic whore, and I've I've clearly said it all over the place, every podcast. <laughs> um, if it doesn't justify it. If the price and what I'm what I'm seeing from my eye point of view doesn't justify the price that I'm um, paying, then I'm not going to pay it. Um, it's not just for a simple upgrading in, in graphics. It has to justify. It has to be that much better to to justify the price paying. And I don't see that with Xbox. And, and again, they they didn't show all their cars. They 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 kind of show you they hey they're they're holding. Uh, 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 Ace of King and the Queen, but you don't know if they got that Jack and Ten for that for for that flush. You know, you don't know. And but they show you the Ace and King and, and Queen. So the so you we love us to speculate. Is is the do you have that flush? Do you have the games to back up um, what you're showing? And I don't I don't know if they do, man. I, I it, we, we've clearly said it that the graphics are great, but the games define the system. But that's that's my problem. We okay, just for a reveal, I don't get this approach. Like, I thought the PlayStation Pro announcement, as far as the reveal, when they told us it was called the Pro and not the uh PlayStation uh Morpheus or not what it was, Morpheus, Neo. it was uh Neo, which I thought was a nicer name than Pro. When they did, I, I thought, okay, it is no way because before that, we hadn't heard about the Switch, we hadn't heard about. We didn't know we were going to hear about Scorpio. I was like, this has got to be the worst way to introduce a new device into the marketplace, what Sony did with the Pro. Because it was it was boring. We all said it was boring. It was a bunch of numbers. But what we did get to see was the system. <laughs> you know, we got to see it. Thanks. You know, every all, you got to see some games running on it. Um, when they did the PlayStation 3, uh, 4, the original, they had that like February announcement where they showed the PlayStation Four. They talked about uh, Mark Cerny talked about the games and and the, uh, the specs and this many teraflops, this many GDR five gigs, this RAM and all that stuff. 
and you saw the platform. Well, you didn't see the platform, but you saw the specs. You saw games running on it. Why go to Digital Foundry and let them talk about what their system is going to be? And this is the reveal. That, that made no sense to me. Where was – okay, I told you I saw this mo three-minute montage of Phil Spencer and all these other developers talking about what they can do now. And this is no hate towards Microsoft. I don't have no problem with them. I just – I would have this I would have this problem if Nintendo or Sony did this. I don't get this approach. I don't get this. Who thought it was smart to say, how about we reveal the Scorpio to the masses by giving the information to Digital Foundry and letting them talk about it instead of us having some set-aside event to where we talk about our new platform, um, almost like what D2K said, information that we all kind of already knew. We all knew it was going to be six teraflops. We all knew it was going to play, supposed to play 4K at 60. And we didn't know it was going to be 60 frames. We still don't know if it's going to be 60 frames. But everything that they announced today, we already knew. So, uh, okay, it's 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 for sure gonna be that now. You know, it ain't it ain't rumor no more. It's for sure now. But we saw nothing. We just heard saw a dude that nobody wanted to see talk about a system that nobody have seen and don't know when we gonna see it. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. I just I just felt like this direction and this this approach was kind of lazy. And Keith said it. It's like you already you. It's like either you got something really like like capable. You must got some very good up your sleeve. Are you admitting defeat to Sony, man? Because <laughs> I but don't think, get but this think, approach. But think about it. The last podcast. Remember, we were talking about just how confident Nintendo seems to be about the Switch even though all the problems that are out there and they just seem like they have this just this quiet you know confidence almost arrogance to like, like mm, yeah it's 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 real sweet mm -hmm, just wait you know that's that's the feeling that i get from nintendo and then you look at all the stuff that's coming down and falling apart with microsoft and you don't see any worry for them whatsoever i mean all these there's so much negativity out there against microsoft for a good reason in a lot of cases and they don't seem to even care. It just seems like they're just like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, we don't have any games. We don't have any first-party games. Yeah, yeah. So right. something is wrong here, and I think that there might be something like that. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm just saying that you know, don't be surprised if they announce a partnership with someone at E3. Well, let me say this, and and, and we can segue into our next topic and kind of bridge them together because you kind of what you just said, uh, did you Kay? makes me think about our next topic square enix made an announcement today or is it today or yesterday i, I read it through my uh, nintendo news that they said they are more focused on nintendo switch more so than both the pro or scorpio they they want to they they more excited about the switch so it goes back to what you just said and, I, and let, me, let me clarify this this ain't no fanboy Fan war, cause I'm not gonna lie. Even though I didn't understand it, like the approach that Microsoft had, I ain't gonna sit up and lie and say it wasn't intriguing. What the dude was talking about, I just didn't like this approach. I didn't like the way that they went about giving us this information. I thought it was kind of lackluster, kind of lazy on their part. But at the same time, I, I'm I'm more interested in that platform than I was the pro. I'm just being honest with you. So, uh, but. Going back to this, it kind of plays into what you're saying, D2K. Square Enix said we are more focused. We we put we got our focus on the Switch and more so than anything what's going on with the Scorpio and what's going on with the Pro. Do you feel like behind the scenes, these developers are feeling like this all this power might not be the direction to go anymore? I don't know. Like what you what you think going on? And, and then I I swing. Across to K bomb and then Keith after this, uh, but go ahead D two because you you made an interesting point. Well, in terms of uh, Square Enix, I think it has more to do with their partnership with Nintendo. I mean, they were tight with Nintendo for years, and then they had that falling out around the N sixty four time. And then I remember reading somewhere one of the major people 
of Square Enix talked about saying that they regret how they played Nintendo to the left back in the mid 90s, how they told everybody not to develop for them and all that type of stuff. So they've really been trying to repair that relationship with Nintendo for a while. And it seems like it's kind of interesting that now all of a sudden they're chummy, chummy, palsy, wowsy with Nintendo. And I think that has a lot more to do with it than anything else. The reason why they want to focus more on the Switch because a lot of the games they make money on, I mean, the Dragon Quest games have always raked in money on Nintendo consoles. So if they have a lot of plans for more Dragon Quest type games or games in that genre. Most likely, it will make it will make more sense for them to focus on the Switch, just like you saw a lot of Square Enix games on the 3DS. That's more. I think that's more the reason why they're more focused on that because that could be the reason. That could be what they're really working on because you got, you know, they they got a lot of resources invested into like Final Fantasy. Seven remake and stuff like that, so they don't really have a lot of resources, a lot of manpower to be doing a whole lot else. So it's not like they have a whole lot of room to be working on this game over here and this game over here. I mean, you know, they only got a, so much manpower that they can apply to game development. So everything else, you would think that would make more sense to focus on a console that caters to the audience that you've made the most money on over the past ten to fifteen years. So I think that's the reason why they're so, you know, gung ho about the switch. Okay. I think about that. But um, I didn't think about it that that way. That but as uh, as far as you know, con I mean, everybody else, I think that you know, it doesn't really make any difference the specs of a console. You just have to make sure that your game is good. You know, if you want the game to look good, then you just have to make sure that it's optimized for that particular console that you're working on. And if you want your game to look the best and you would put it on the pc and, and call it a day so you know i think that it, there i mean the whole thing about power like you know uh k -Bon was saying it's, it's getting ridiculous people are just getting getting power for the sake of power they don't know what to do with it you know if you have a if you have an idea of a game in mind you say okay we want to do this and this and this and this and this we can't do this on the hardware that we have let's build a console around this idea that's what nintendo used to do they used to build consoles around their ideas now people are just saying, let's build the most powerful machine ever and then figure out what we're going to do with it later. That doesn't work. So <laughs> That's because third parties are are moving the needle. Not and, that, and, 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 and I was just going to say what you just said, K-Bug, because I think that's what, and I don't know if it's the right bet, but I think that's what's driving Microsoft. I think they see in the fact that the PlayStation 4, because it was perceived, uh, and it is, but the perception then reality of it being the most powerful system and how third party seems to have gravitated to that platform and making making sure the games play at this level 1080p um, you no know, 30 frame like that the whole argument kind of made the Xbox one irrelevant to the current generation and so the you know they are everything is being led on the PlayStation 4 like Destiny and Call of Duty and all the other games are leading out with the PlayStation 4. I think Microsoft thinking if we make the most powerful system, then we get the attraction and the attention of we get the attention of third party. No, we'll be attracted to third party, and through th third party wins the hearts of the game. Well, if that's their but I, I think if, if that's their strategy, it's a failed strategy because I said 15 minutes yeah, ago they've had the most powerful console twice and failed. It wasn't even a so it, wasn't, so it wasn't even a perception. It was reality. It was fact. The Xbox. So you think the 360 was a failure too? You think the 360 was a failure? Yes, because even though it sold 85 million copies, they were they lost a billion dollars because of the Red Ring of Death and the E74 um, problems. And Sony okay. lost Sony yeah. lost two billion dollars that generation for other reasons. So you know, like, did you really win? No, you didn't turn a profit, and you came out of the a billion dollars in the hole. The Xbox division, that is. So you had a powerful system that didn't work twice, and they came out immediately said because of them falling out with Sony because originally they just wanted to put windows on the PlayStation. That's how they got involved in all this. They wanted to put windows on the PlayStation. Sony said no. So Bill Gates said, okay, I'll fix you. So they decided to make the Xbox and they said, whatever we do, we need to make, need to make sure our console is always more powerful than Sony. And everybody knew that. So everybody knew the Xbox was going to be the most powerful console of the sixth generation and it failed. It got his butt whooped 
buy the PlayStation 2. So if that's their play, they're in big trouble. The, the, the thing is, when it comes to third party, let's let's be completely honest. Let's put all the cards on the table. Third party is in it for third party, right? They don't care <laughs> who fails or who succeeds. They want to make sure they succeed. And so what you see is third party is going to put their system on whoever is selling the most. Bottom line, powerful or not, the PS3 was more powerful than the 360 because of the cell processor. It was not being sold. It was too hard. Bump that. We're going to put all our games on the 360 because we know how to do this quickly and we can make some money. PS4. PS4 is, is, is out just doubling Xbox One. Yeah, Xbox for that loyalty we had last generation. Yeah, that's cool. This is PS4 making money. Somebody hop on this PS4 boat. And if you take it back further, the PS2 sold 100 and what, 30, 60, 70 million? And they were all about the PS2 One, and the next generation switched right through the 360. And so the loyalty for third party is not there. They're about that money. They're about them dollars. And, that and they're going to do whatever they got to do to keep that money flowing. And that goes back to what I was saying before is that Microsoft doesn't have an identity to know who they are to be able to create something that will make us want to buy their console over on the, over Nintendo or Sony. Nintendo knows who they are. Sony knows who they are. Microsoft yeah, doesn't. Sony, Sony, Sony is proven who they I think Sony going through that struggle of the PlayStation 3 early on, Sony grew an identity. They they went first party heavy and they started developing their own IPs that that represented their their hardware, and you're right. Now I I, I hope that Sony don't get in and it, and it don't look like they have, but I hope they don't fall into the trap of being so uh, comfortable and relaxed because they have the support of third party that they stop making and pumping out. Cause they haven't been pumping out first party offerings like they did on the PlayStation Three. No, they haven't. They they've been pumping them out, but it's been far in between. We got what Uncharted Four and and Rising Zero done, and and what Knack and Kill Zone and Ratchet and Clank. What else? And for the last of us. The Last of Us, which was the last generation, so I won't even count that. But yeah, it's, it's a new one coming, and God of War. So Wait. that's what six games, six seven games. Uh, it's, it's it's more than that. I just I, I had to go and, and research it. Uh, we just talking about the big hitters. The six game. There's still more than that. Um, you got the show. You got the, you no know, baseball show game. Uh, it's, it's still made, but for the most part, as far as things that's making folks turn their head and and look at Sony from a first party offering, there's not that many there. Whereas back in the day, we was getting on the PlayStation Three. Sony was throwing out. The, first the party offers right, huh? Uh, the getaway Gran Turismo, we were getting those all the time. Yeah, so we, we was getting first really party offers left and right. Yeah. Right, so I think that luxury of third party, and that that they get so intoxicated by the fact that third party is rocking with them, they stop focusing on the thing that's gonna that's gonna keep them afloat. When third party, like you said. Don't come to them because they ain't selling the most, and they they go to whoever they hoard themselves out to whoever's selling the most. I'm putting the most uh, money, gonna get them the most money. So, like D2K said, they do got an identity. I get it to Sony and Microsoft definitely doesn't. I thought they were trending towards an identity, but I I don't think they use for playing from behind in the sense of after the three probably surmise that they've won that generation. Uh, one more generation, seven. I would think. I, I would think <laughs> Microsoft they won. They didn't win. I, nothing. I, 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 they won the failure reward. <laughs> what I mean is, they had they had dominating first party support. Even though I would say the Wii was the the talk of that generation. The Wii killed in first party. The the, the Wii Wii Sport is the best selling game ever. I know, I, well, but I know, I know, I know. We it's know sold this, eighty-five million saying, copies. <laughs> right, I know, I know. We know this. Uh, what I'm saying is, 
far as what folks would call they, you know, it was the war was really between Microsoft and Sony. Nintendo, they don't we they don't count that in that in that vote. So while in actuality it will be the Wii, most would say the 360 dominated seven gen oh. until late and Sony kind of came up late and took it, right? I mean, the Xbox 360, in terms of the quality of the games, was the best play for yeah. Microsoft, yes. But in yeah. terms of actual what they got back yeah. from that, no. Like I said, they no, were no, I'm, not, I'm not talking about what they got back. I'm not talking about what they got back. You're right. I'm saying from games and what was folks was playing, the Xbox 360 was the platform that third party preferred. Right. And you got you got the gears. You right. Halo was in this, doing this thing at that time. Right. So you, you had it, it. They was hitting, but like you said, sales wise, both and Sony <laughs> took it. I mean, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if they didn't have the red ring in the E74 and Sony didn't have the yellow light of death and they didn't have Hat Gate and all that other stuff to see what would have happened if they just wouldn't be able to go toe to toe, you know, with no mistakes whatsoever to see how if they would have surpassed the Wii. Or you know, or they would have stayed where they were at. Right. So between Sony and Microsoft, I would I would say, if we just scratch the sales, looking at what both platforms was doing for the generation, I would say that the Xbox 360 took that generation. And I oh, think shit, that's <laughs> you still uh, go ahead, keep explain. I I, I want to say something. I want to. I mean, you, you. I mean, you pretty much said it. Like later on, uh, the PS3 took it with the first party titles, things like that. But I mean, the, the Xbox 360 was on the market for a whole year, and they still came up short before the Play, PlayStation 3 came along. Um, and I just don't feel like the. I don't. I don't feel like Xbox games have ever really been that strong. I think on the original Xbox, maybe you know, you had the Halo, and it was changing the game. But on the 360, I just feel like they never really had that game or those games. I feel like Sony is always. Go ahead. I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, Halo Three alone outsold all of the first party exclusives on the PlayStation Three. Well, I'm not. A, I'm not a Halo fan, so and, that's, 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 that's that was originally a um, an Xbox, Xbox exclusive because it was published by uh, Microsoft. X, Microsoft. But that's the thing. Like, why would you get rid of your 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 games? Like, they they didn't get rid of it. The EA bought. Um, <laughs> they bought Bioware. Microsoft didn't own Bioware. Bioware was their own developer. Uh, they just helped publish uh, Mass Effect because it, it did them good because it kept it away from Sony. But EA came and bought Bioware because they were like, oh, okay, y'all for Bioware can do y'all thing. And they bought them and pulled them under their umbrella, which initially made it third party. The same, very similar thing they did with Titanfall. Uh, it was published by uh, Microsoft. But EA owned that um, company. I forgot the name of that company. It makes Titanfall, but they own that company, and so that's why Titanfall Two is now on both consoles. It would be like if somebody came, if Nintendo bought Shinin Multimedia. Which you know their have. games. Their games been most. I mean, they've they've put games on other consoles, but mostly their games are for Nintendo. But they are not owned by Nintendo. They're not a second party. But Nintendo should buy them now. But <laughs> you know that's another conversation. <laughs> but it'd be like if they bought them. It'd be the same thing. Uh, reason I say I would give it to Xbox, even though you're right, Keith, towards the end in sales, the PlayStation 4 uh, did surpass marginally surpass the, the Xbox 360. But when it mattered, it was the Xbox 360, not the PlayStation 3. That was a long generation, so the power of the sale process allowed the PlayStation 4 to, to keep going. I mean the PlayStation 3 to keep going where the Xbox 360, you clearly started to see that it was old hardware. It, it, it hit a wall. It hit a wall. Yeah, hard. it hit the Xbox 360 hit a wall that the PlayStation 3 didn't hit. Uh the PlayStation 3 was still looking good with the last of us. They were steady expanding. There was still room to explore with that cell processes where the 360, it long had exceeded its its time on the market. It was just so popular. And folks was liking it, even though they was on their fifth system. <laughs> even even though they had bought their fifth Xbox, sorry, but they were still rocking with it. So uh, I would say Xbox took it if we if we removed 
that that system that was SD standard called the Wii. If we remove the Wii out of the equation, I would say 360. But if we bring the Wii into the equation, then it's Wii all day. But with that being said, I think Sony, Microsoft don't know what to do once they lost the support and the, and the backing of third party. It seemed like Microsoft haven't known what to do since that happened. And even their games, which were great alongside third party, they was making great stuff. But now third party is Sony's new girl and Sony's a uh, babe and Sony's a uh, woman. Microsoft don't know what to do, first party or otherwise. It's like, dude, like you, you really hurt third party left, y'all. Like, it's, and I think that's what they're trying to get them back. And they need somebody in there to come in and tell them what to do. And that person has to be, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's going to be Sony, so it has to be Nintendo. <laughs> you ain't going to let that one go. <laughs> no. You gonna make, because it I makes so make much it. sense. <laughs> it does. They are, they are, they are a software company trying to be a hardware company. Microsoft is a software company. Windows, everything that they have is software. Why are you trying to still make console uh, hardware? Wasn't it like um, their investors or whoever they had wanted them to get out the hardware a long time ago? Hey, hey, they they, they just made their own uh, PC uh, this year, so I don't think they're getting out of the hardware game because they just the Microsoft had they have their own PC now. I did. Uh, but you know what? That's what I thought they should have done with Scorpio. I thought that they should have took and take out a page on Nintendo's book because Nintendo basically they said, look, we don't want to put the effort necessary to compete with Microsoft and Sony on the home console front that way. We just don't want to do that. We can. We just don't want to do it. We're looking at our history. The best thing that, or the, the greatest strengths that we've had in our history has been portables. We've made we sold way more portables and home consoles. We've sold way more games on portable consoles than on home consoles. So we're going to make our home console a portable console. I think that so, uh, Microsoft should look at the same thing and say, okay, since we are a software company and we predominantly make software for PCs, and now we're even making PCs ourselves, like Hey Bob just said, let's make a PC that can become a console just like the switch is a portable console that can become a home console let it be a regular computer that does everything a computer can do but then you load up some type of a app or something like that and it switches over to a console mode and you got your xbox elite controller there and you have all the resources of having a, a pc but it's in a console format steam does that right with big picture mode yeah but Microsoft could do that too, and probably better. And, and and that's what I thought, even looking at the specs that Scorpio could be. I think Scorpio could still be that be a PC. Because Windows 10 is so light that you can just place it over anything almost. Uh and so I'm still thinking in the back of my mind, I know I kind of first time saying this, that I still think Scorpio may end up being uh a, a console PC, and and be able to do the same thing that PCs can do. That's 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 my thinking. And maybe that's and maybe somewhere behind the scenes, all three companies sat together and said, you know what, we can't keep going at each other like this because this is detrimental to all of us as you know our company's you know health. So let's just let's just all pick a lane. You know, let's just all pick a lane and stay in that lane. Microsoft says, okay, we'll stay in the PC area. Sony says, we'll be the dedicated console lane. Nintendo says, we'll be the portable lane. Everybody is where they're most comfortable, where they're most successful, where their strengths lie, and everybody makes money. Get in Utopia, that would probably be nice. I, I mean, that don't sound bad, D2, but I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. I just hope Microsoft don't just do a power like you said a powerful system in hopes that third party chooses to jump back on their bandwagon because i don't i think them days are over i think sony that's gonna be real i think like you said nintendo see the writing on the wall that's sony's lane right now like they third party seems to like sony they left for one generation with the xbox but that was just that one but for the most part they've been rocking with sony since they left Nintendo. 
and they seem like they like some. And uh, I think Microsoft tried to fight this power war thing with fight this power war thing. It's it doesn't matter no more. Nobody really, I mean, only schools care now. P power ain't for. And I think they need, like you said, that works for them. And like you said, DPK, find an identity and, and just rock with that because clearly sony and mark sony and nintendo got identities microsoft has an identity but it don't seem like they want to go that route which is like you said keep software and uh and that that do makes more sense to me so i don't know i don't know i i, I i'm curious what's going to happen at e3 i'm not writing off the scorpio i i I just didn't like the fact that they gave the responsibility to Digital Foundry to announce it. I don't get that. We should have saw Phil Spencer. We should have saw Microsoft representatives. We should have saw an event from Microsoft where we was invited in and they said, look, this is the Scorpio. They got all of I don't want to see this dude over here. I don't want to see this dude from Digital wow. Foundry. I'm sorry, I, man. I, I don't want to see him. Who, who, watches yeah. Digital Foundry, who watches Digital Foundry videos? Nerds? Well, what, uh, Council War? Council yeah, War individual? No, well, no, PC tech heads. That's what the Scorpio is for. That's what they're trying to go at. That's why they... But not just, not, just, not, not just PC tech heads watch Digital Foundry. A lot of Council War heads watch it, too. Well, I would say the Council War heads are the people who basically fiend off of specs you know they're the ones that are fighting yeah. oh it's, it's teraflops here and this bandwidth there you know because that's what right. they do they basically take games they put them through the ringer they said they, they show like oh this game has a frame rate dip here blah 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 that's what they do so i guess they wanted to go there because they wanted to say hey if digital foundry is behind us then you guys can trust the power of scorpio yep. okay yeah okay i get i, I see that yeah I and i want to i wanted to add to be honest, what it looks like to me is that uh, if you ever been a, uh, a rap concert and, and the rapper has that hype man, and the hype man comes out and be like, yo, 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 we about to kill my man in the back, getting ready by the throw down on the ones and twos. I feel like <laughs> Xbox just gave it over to the hype man and say, hey, yo, man, uh, go up and hype the crowd up. Hype the crowd up before E3 comes out. Go, go get them. That's exactly what they you did, know, K-Bone. That's all exactly these numbers, what they did. Digits. And these teraflops get the crowd going crazy, and then I'm gonna come in and drop the mic on them. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. But that made Digital Foundry look like are you paying to praise these platforms? Or are you so like again? So anyway, we we I feel like we unexhausted the whole Microsoft conversation. But like I said, I feel like they should have did a better, they should have done this a lot better. Cause first impressions is a lasting impression, and I feel like this is just like Okay, oh cool. Or some uh, six teraflops. Okay, I do that almost a year ago. <laughs> so I didn't know how to feel about it, man. Once I got done watching the dude talking about it, I was like, and then he showed a clip, a picture of of Forza uh in 4K six. I'm like, dude, this is this is just this doesn't look that much better than what you just shown, and it's on YouTube, so we really how can't is a see picture gonna a is, picture just a still picture? Or yeah, just a still picture. How you? Never mind. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Did you? Okay, it made no sense, man. It made no sense. I was like, who signed off with announcing it this way? I mean, like again, I thought the pro was pretty bad. This this made the pro look competent. I don't, I don't know who thought of this. Was, I don't know who thought this was the wisest way to do it. They can't be this dilapidated. There has to be something else that we don't know about behind their court. There's just no way they can be this obtuse. They're just they're, There's something else that we don't know about that they're going to tell us about at E3. They're just going to be like, oh, I get it. There has I to be. I hope so. I hope so, man. Sound like a company that's about to go, if this don't work, about to go back to PC. <laughs> that's what it sounds like because they every they making every game just about available on PC. You don't have to have an Xbox. Like play it anywhere, wherever you are, whatever device you got, play it on it. As long as you got uh Windows 10. Software. 
I don't know. <laughs> Software maybe I don't know Microsoft, what Microsoft, maybe, maybe Microsoft needs to become like Skynet to become software in cyberspace. <laughs> <You know? laughs> there is no system core. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> so anyway, man, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I think we is there anything else we want to talk about? I don't know what else. Did I have anything else down here to talk about? Hold up. I just I got one thing oh. I want to talk about. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say that just uh, to tie up the whole WrestleMania thing is that you know it was um it was it was a good show but you know it ended on a real sad note because you know it was the last match for the undertaker um he retired um he lost to roman reigns which is basically what you normally do that's how you do it you know this the most professional way of doing it well, well no well you know i mean it was nobody really left that he could that's who they want to push as their next big thing so that's how you do it I mean, he's always the guy that plays on Undertaker, Mark Calloway, he's always been the guy that's he's the ultimate company guy. I mean, this dude right. has been there for 27 straight years. You can't find no one to say a bad thing about him. Everybody looks up to him. There's nobody that's ever wrestled anywhere that's got more respect than this dude. And for him to go out like that and just put this dude over, you know, that's you know, that's just respect right there. And when he was getting ready to leave the ring, I'm like, man, he probably gonna retire. Then he got back in the ring. He start taking his gloves off and like, oh man, this, yeah, this, I saw this, that. This this man. is happening. This is gonna happen. I can't believe it. Yeah. You know, took I his. Saw it. I saw like how he went down under, like he walked back to that place where he came up out of the ground, out of the platform, and went back down with his fist up. Oh, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, that what was did gangster. you think of? Did Did you watch the follow night on Monday Night Raw when Roman Reigns came out? Yeah, I did. That was something else. Boy, <laughs> they let that guy how have it. They boo. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, I don't watch it, but I ain't seen this much booing since the only other person that was booed like this that wasn't a hit was Cena. And we see where he at now. This dude literally um, went down. And I know he's still the man, but we all think they don't know what to do with him no more because the older crowd don't like him. The kids love him, but the, the older crowd don't like him. And I think the same thing going on with Roman Reigns. Nobody like him. So well, the reason why don't people know, don't like Roman Reigns is because they feel like he was pushed too fast, and they feel like yeah. they want him to be a heel, but WWE doesn't want to turn him heel. They forcing him to be a face, even though they don't want him to be a face. And it's more or less they're not so much mad at him; they're mad at the establishment and management because they won't do what they're asking right. them to do. So you know they're taking their hatred out on him. And you know he's he's gonna have to learn. He's gonna have to take a page out of his cousin's book on how to be how to do this right because they, this happened to the Rock. You know when the Rock was right. the face. You know you had people saying die Rocky, die and Rocky sucks. When he's a good guy, you know he was a white meat baby face. Rocky, you know Rocky uh, Maivia. Uh, you know, well, yeah, Maivia. Yeah. <clears throat> and then then he came back and he joined a Nation of Domination. And then people were like, whoa, where did this come from? And they said, you know, now you're going to be The Rock. And that's all they needed to do. Let him be a heel. Let him be himself. And look at what happened after that. And that's what they need to do with Roman Reigns. Stop trying to face, force him down people's throat as a face and make him a heel and let him talk. Take the people in the script, tear it up, let dude say what he want to say. And then within a couple of months, he'll be the biggest, he'll be getting cheers like Austin and The Rock. So what's going on with Cena? Is, wasn't that the same thing they want to do? They want to happen with Cena. They want to see him go heel, but the WWE won't let him. Or, or no, he see what Cena is about money because they make too much money off his merchandise, and they don't want that to stop by making him the quote unquote bad guy because he's making all his money or making all his merchandise sales being the <laughs> the superhero to the kids, and he's going to Make a Wish Foundation and all that type of stuff. So if he went back to being a doctor of thugonomics. We would go out and buy his gear, but the kids might not. And the kids were like, "Well, why see a car that woman a H word?" Uh, uh, <coughs> well, uh, <coughs> you know, some parents don't want to have to explain that stuff to their kids. You know, why is he calling? Why is he smacking that okay. woman on the butt? You know, they don't want to do that. So, yeah, it's about money with Johnson. Right. All right. Well, somebody was so mad because I keep blocking them. They keep making up. I love this. Is fun. Let me block you again. 
But uh, <laughs> they get mad. <laughs> they keep on making uh sock accounts and coming back in and saying stupid stuff. Like, dude, you gotta have no life to keep doing this. Just you get blocked, and you still coming back with stupid stuff. So anyway, but let's go ahead and shut this down. So when he try to get back in here, there's nobody here to talk to. So uh, <laughs> go ahead and sign out. Uh, K Bomb Twenty, you muted. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, I'm gonna mute it. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I enjoyed the podcast, even though we did uh, a, a lot of Xbox and Nintendo talk and very little Sony talk. But uh, I am <laughs> we did being, some Sony talk too. We did some I'm Sony talk. Flexible. I can bend and and shape depending on the comp. Nah, it's just, no, I had fun, man. It, it was it was dope, man. Uh, I always <laughs> enjoyed being on the podcast. I was happy I was able to make this one. I almost didn't was wasn't able to make it, so I was happy I did make it. So uh, enjoy having you guys again, man. Always fun. All right. Mr. Keith Norris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great podcast. I want to say one thing, though. Um, this switch has changed um, the way I choose to buy games. Uh, I was going to get Snake Pass on, on Steam. I was like, mm, I kind of want to be able to take it on the go. Uh, so now I'm, in, I, I'm at that point where it's like if a third-party game come out on Steam or if it come out on Switch, uh, it's a toss-up. I don't really care about the power. You know what I mean? But anyways, like I said, good podcast. Enjoy talking to you guys about the Scorpio. Uh, still, We are still lost on what the Scorpio is. But uh, until next time. D2K. Um, I think I've ran my mouth enough. So I'll just say goodbye. We'll see you next time. All right. Yes, man, this has been a, a good one. I enjoyed all you guys tonight. And I will say to the listening audience, keep it gaming, keep it fun, and keep it safe. Till next time, folks. Deuces.